Welcome to this lesson called Send Out Workers. This is from chapter 8 in my book The Call of Jesus and video number 8 in this series about the call of Jesus. We have now looked at how the harvest is ready and the harvest is plentiful, as Jesus is saying. The harvest is right. The harvest is not the problem. No, there is a great harvest that is waiting for all of us. The problem is not the harvest, the problem is the workers. You and me. So the harvest is not the problem, the workers are the problem. And the answer to that problem, one of those are pray. Pray, not pray for the harvest to come in, as many people are doing, but pray for the workers to go out. And this is what we are going to look at in this chapter, in this video. So let's start with reading what Jesus is saying again in Luke 10 verse 2. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. So yes, we really need to start to ask or pray as we see here, to pray, to ask, to beg, that is some of the words these are, are using. It's a very strong word, P pray, ask, but we actually see the word almost beg, like beg, beg, beg the God of the harvest to send out workers. Jesus have commanded us to pray, and it's important we pray. And there's many people who pray every day. But there's many people for them pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Out of Matthew 6. And it's, it's good to pray that prayer. But you know, that was not the only prayer Jesus have commanded us to pray. He have not only said that we should pray the Lord's Prayer there. He have also said that we should pray God to send out workers, like Jesus is saying. But how many do actually pray that prayer? If I now go to the church and ask, how many pray the Lord's Prayer? Almost everyone will lift up their hands. But if I ask, but how many pray this prayer Jesus has commanded us here to pray God to send out workers. Almost no one will lift up their hands. And that is a problem. Because what Jesus is saying here is most the truth as what he said when it comes to the Lord's Prayer. But what do we mean when we pray that God, God to send out workers? And I want to look a little at the word send out. And I want to start with reading from my book. There are several interesting things about what Jesus is saying here in Luke 10 2. The first interesting thing is that the Bible translates one of Jesus' words to send. But the Greek word ebola could also mean to drive out. The word ebola is the same word using when referring to driving out a demon. One of the first places in the Bible you see this word Ebola used is in Matthew 10, where Jesus commanded us to drive out demons. Matthew 10, 7, 8 states, As you go, proclaim the message, the kingdom of heaven hath Come near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out or Ebola, demons, freely you have received, freely give. So what we see here is that the word sent, Ebola, could also be translated drive out. And I believe it's, it's really saying so much more about what it is. Why? Because a demon don't want to go. A demon don't want to go, so a demon needs to be driven out of a person. The same way we as believers, we just don't want to go out in the harvest. We don't want to go out and talk about Jesus. We don't want to, so we need often to be driven out. And this is what it is. And if you start to pray, to beg, to ask God, 
to drive out the believers out in the harvest, send them, drive them out, he is going to answer it. He is going to answer it. And right now in this time we're living in, there is a virus that has been spreading all over and people are in panic all over the world because of this coronavirus. But I want to introduce you to another virus. A virus that's not going to bring fear, but a virus that's going to bring hope, that's going to bring life. And that virus is called Luke 10 to b The virus is called Luke 10 to b And I want to read about that from my book here. Some years ago, I heard about a virus that was spreading all over the world. This virus was called the Luke 10 to b virus. This virus started back in 2002, where two young people started to pray out of Luke 10 to b But in order to remember to pray this prayer, these two young boys set their watch to beep every day at 10.02 in the morning and 10.02 in the evening. So when the clock would beep, they would remember these words in Luke 10 to, so they would pray to God to send out workers to the harvest. We can see that God has answered their prayers because we are now seeing many people all over the world going out to the harvest and we are seeing more and more people praying the same prayer. Hallelujah! And I have also seen this again and again. When I start to pray, God send out workers, send out workers to the harvest, send out workers to the harvest, I started to see God answer that prayer. The last year, we, well, me, the last reformation, the people I'm working with, we have seen thousands of workers being sent out to the harvest. We need to pray this. We need to start to pray for workers to the harvest. So let's spread this virus. Take your watch, take your alarm clock, take your telephone and put it on 10 02. And then every morning 10.02 or every evening 10.02 and you hear the alarm clock, you will remember what Jesus is saying in Luke 10 verse 2. What will happen if you do this? First, you remember, you will keep your focus sharp and you will start to pray. God, send out workers, drive out workers, drive out workers and you will experience how he will answer your prayer. Second, Second, you also experience how he will send you out. Why? Because if you set your alarm clock every day and it beep beep and you are thinking of the workers and you are praying God send out workers, send out workers, after a short time you feel something stirring up in you. You also need to go out. You also need to start to open your mouth and share about Jesus. It will help to pray this. It will help to keep your focus sharp. It will help you, but it will also drive you out yourself. Let's read some more from my book here. Prayer is also important for us because it transforms us. When you start to pray out of Luke 10 too, you will start to experience how this prayer will actually create something within you. After praying this prayer for just a short time, you will understand that it is truly on God's heart to see people safe. We see this in Luke 15, 4-7, when Jesus talked about leaving the 99 sheep to go out to find the one that was lost. So here we see when we pray, it will stir something up in us. But it will also give us the right heart, like Jesus left the 99 to find that one sheep that was lost. When you start to Pray, God, send our workers, send our workers to the harvest, send our workers. I ask you, the harvest is ready, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. When you start to pray that, God will answer that prayer and that prayer will stir something up inside of you. You know, it's time to pray biblical. It's time to pray according to the word. We have been for years prayed for revival like. Revival is something that just comes by itself. Like suddenly the harvest just come in the door. 
But Jesus have not one place said that we should pray for the harvest to come in, have he? No, but he have asked us to pray for the workers to go out. Why? Because harvest cannot come into the harvest, to the barn. Harvest cannot move. We had to go out to it. And I'm going to tell more about that later. So it's wrong if you pray for revival like it is something that just come total by itself from God. No, we need to go out in the harvest. And there I'm not only talking about going out on the street, I'm talking about your neighbors, your friends, your family, your co-workers, people in your neighborhood. It is so important, this truth about the harvest that's ready and pray God to send our workers. Why? Because Satan has been trying so much to keep us away from this. So we need to start to pray. Pray according to God's word. Not just say a lot of words, but pray in faith according to God's words. And I want to read more from my book here. To pray for revival as if it is totally up to God to do it is not a biblical prayer. Are you aware that you can pray wrong? If we pray for things that are not biblical, we will not see any result. James 4.3 talks about this by stating, When you pray, you do not receive because you pray with wrong motive, that you may spend it on your own pleasures. Matthew 6, 7 states, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Yes, this is so true. We can pray wrong. And we can just pray a lot of words and thinking that if we just repeat the prayer and pray a lot of words, we will be heard. No, we need to pray from our hearts. Many years ago, I was praying the Lord's Prayer, like just words, 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 words. My heart was not in it. And I know, as I said, many people are praying there today. They're just praying words. We need to pray biblical and we need to pray from our heart. We need to pray according to God's will. And a good example is what we saw here with Jesus. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send workers. This is a biblical prayer and this is a prayer according to God's will. And if you pray that from your heart, you know that you already received what you pray for. I can come with an example of a bad prayer that is not according to God's word. Some years ago, I remember we led a, a new person to Christ who had no Christian background. She was very new in the faith. Short time after she came to faith, she came to me, very excited, said, Tom, Tom, I have an idea. I have an idea. And I was very excited to listen to her idea. I, I, I have an idea. I really believe it was God, she said. And I was like, okay, let me hear. Who is the one who is creating all the problems in the world? Satan. What if we can get all Christians to come together and pray for Satan, that Satan may get saved? If Satan may get saved, we will not have those problems anymore. And she was so sweet when she said that, and I couldn't stop laughing. Her heart was good, her attention was good, but to pray for Satan to get saved is a waste of time. Why? It's not a biblical prayer. God is not going to answer it. Why? Because it goes against his word. Another prayer that is not biblical. Oh God, God, I pray for my city that they will get saved. Oh God, I pray that you send people to our church. Now I'm provoking you a little. But where do you find those prayers like if we just pray, people will get saved automatically? It almost sounds in in those prayers, like it's God who is keeping back. Like God, he don't want people to get saved. God, he wants people to get saved. So much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. God sent his son to die for every man out there. The harvest is plentiful. Workers are the problem. Not God in that sense. I don't say that you cannot pray for your city. I don't say that it's, that, that it's not okay to pray for people. You can pray for people that they may open their hearts to receive. And you can pray that God will draw people. But 
if you pray like you don't need to do anything else or like they will come in in the church by themselves or suddenly give their life to God by themselves, then you're praying a wrong prayer. Prayer is, is unbiblical. And this is how many people have been praying in churches for years. Oh God, send people like this who get saved. Do you know, faith comes by hearing the word of God. And we need somebody to preach. Paul is very, very clear. We need people to be sent out. Paul is saying that in Romans 10, 13, and I will read here. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one they have not yet heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can someone preach unless they are sent? Can you see it? This is so clear. We need to pray for God to send out workers. Why? Because when pe people are sent, they can preach, and when they are priests, other people can hear, and they can come to faith, and they can get saved. People don't come to faith without hearing. We can pray for our cities, but a more biblical prayer is pray God to send out workers. So let's start to pray that. Let's every morning when you wake up and the alarm clock, or every evening, or during the day, when you think of it, pray this. Oh God, I pray for those people out there. God, I pray for people in our cities that you will send our workers to our city. God, I pray for my neighborhood that you will send our workers. God, I pray for my family that you will send our workers, God, to preach the gospel so they can hear, so they can believe, so they can get saved. Set your alarm clock. Set your alarm clock, do that, to 1002 as a reminder to you about this, about what Jesus is saying. To remind you to pray, but also keep your focus sharp and get a new heart for people out there. And God, he will answer this prayer. And then please spread this virus. This virus you are commanded to spread. <laughs> you are allowed to spread. Spread this virus to everyone out there. And let's see a prayer movement where people start to pray biblical. Pray according to God's word because then we know he answers and give us what we pray for. And I have testimony about testimony about testimonies of that. But I will start to pray now. Let me pray. God, I pray for everyone who has seen this. God, I pray that you stir something up in their heart. And God, I pray that you will put this on their heart, that they together with me will pray, God. God, send out workers, God. God, we pray that you will send out workers to our city. God, we pray that you will send out workers to our country, God. God, send out workers. Drive out workers from our churches, God. God, take the people in our churches and we pray, God, that you will drive them out, God. Drive them out in the harvest, God. The harvest that is ready. The harvest is plentiful, God. The harvest is not the problem. The problem is the workers. The workers are few. So, God, we pray. We stand together and we pray that you will drive out workers to the harvest, God. And we will see that the harvest is ready and plentiful, as you have said. Hallelujah. Pray this. Keep praying this. Stay together with me. Pray this every morning, every evening, during the day, and see how it's going to transform your life. Until next time, share this video and spread the virus to millions of people out there. Spread it as much as you can. And then we will see more workers go out. Find a person of peace, as we are going to talk about later. Go into the household, heal the sick, cast out demons, and we'll see a move of God like we have never, ever seen before. God bless you, and see you next time. Bye-bye.